In this video, we will learn how to integrate a rational function using a partial fractions. So what we're going to do, we're going to integrate this function over here, 3x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. So first of all, we need to use partial fraction to break this down. So partial fraction is basically opposite of like when we add two different fractions, we find a common denominator and we combine them to make one fraction. What in partial fraction here, we're going to break it down into two different fractions. So first of all, what we need to do, what we need to know in partial fraction is we, we need to know the degree of the numerator and the denominator. And if the degree of uh, the numerator is less than uh, the denominator, then we're going to use our uh, partial fraction method that I'm going to go over here in a moment. Otherwise, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator, that is our improper rational, uh, improper fraction. And then in that case, we need to use, uh, we need to use the division. We need to use the long division to break it down and then use the partial fraction. So first of all, let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to break this. I'm going to write the factors of this denominator i'm going to write it in a linear factors in terms of linear factors linear factor is when the power of x is one so right now it looks like a quadratic equation so let's say 3x minus 1 and x square minus 1 can be written as x minus 1 into x plus 1 dx i always use the standard formula you know a square minus b square is equal to a minus b into a plus b so i just use this formula over here so now what we need to do first of all we need to write the partial fractions okay so let's break this fraction down into two different fractions what we do so 3x minus 1 over x minus 1 into x plus 1 can be written as a over one of that linear factor which is x minus one and then we got b over other factor which is x plus one okay so next step is multiply both side by this common denominator which is x minus one into x plus one okay so when we multiply so this will cancel this on the left hand side so left hand side will left with 3x minus 1 and the first term x minus 1 will cancel x minus 1 so we left with a into x plus 1 and here we got uh, b into x minus 1 because this x plus 1 will cancel this x plus 1 so in this case now let's say when let's say when x is equal to one so from here if we plug in this equal to zero so x minus one is equal to zero gives me x is equal to one so if we plug in x is equal to one in this equation over here in this equation so left hand side we got x is one three times one is three so this gives me three minus one is equal to a into so 1 plus 1 is 2 plus b into 1 minus 1 is 0 so this term becomes 0 so this gives me 2 is equal to 2a and divide both sides by 2 this gives me a is equal to 1 and when x is equal to if we plug in this equal to 0 so when x is equal to minus 1 so left hand side becomes 3 into minus 1 minus 1 is equal to if x is minus 1 now this term becomes 0 so 0 plus b into minus 1 because x is minus 1 another minus 1 here so this gives me minus 3 minus 1 is equal to minus 1 minus 1 gives me minus 2b so minus 2 sorry minus 4 minus 2b 
and when we solve this gives me b is equal to two like divide both side by negative two all right so we got our a and b so that way we can break this fraction into this partial fraction over here so this integration can be written as integration a is one a is one over x minus one x minus one dx then comes the value of b plus let's say this is equal to i so i is equal to this and b is 2 so integration 2 over x plus 1 dx all right now use the formula the standard formula of integration so that gives me integration of 1 over x you know it's log of x so this is equal to log of absolute value of x minus 1 plus integration of this constant comes out this gives me 2 log of x plus 1 plus constant of integration so this is the answer for integral of this uh, rational function by using partial fractions let's do another example in which we're going to go over a uh, fraction that's where denominator is in terms of repeated linear factors in that case we need to use this formula or this method little differently so let me go over that too so next example is x square plus 1 over x minus 1 square x plus 3 so see this this uh, factor is repeated so it's x minus 1 is 2 times over here so what we need to do over here so let's let's write the partial fractions first so x square plus 1 over x minus 1 square into x plus 3 so which is written as a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 square see whatever is repeated we need to use a square over here because when we gonna write when we're gonna change let me write third part too c over x plus 3 so now if we want to find a common denominator you know it can be possible with this term to this and this and without using this so it maybe we need this maybe we don't need this or maybe we need this one okay so we need to include both of these terms okay and that only happened when we have a repeated linear factor like this one over here x minus one comes twice here so first one we're gonna write just like this and second one we're gonna put square and if let's say there's a cube then we're gonna put one more term with the cube on it in the denominator so now same thing if we multiply uh, both side by this uh, what we call it uh, common denominator which is x minus 1 square into x plus 3 multiply on both hand side so left hand side this will cancel the denominator and we we'll left with x square plus 1 and right hand side we left with so it will cancel one of the x minus 1 so we left with a into x minus 1 into x plus 3 and here we left with b into so x minus 1 square will cancel out b into x plus 3 and c into x minus 1 square because x plus 3 will cancel this x plus 3 all right so now we what we're gonna do let's say if x is equal to 1 see i got x minus 1 term that tells me there is x is equal to 1 if x is equal to 1 left hand side is equal to 1 square is 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 if x is 1 so this will give me 0 so this term is 0 and here we got b into 1 plus 3 and if x is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so this term is also 0 so that tells me b is basically 2 is equal to 4b divide both sides by 4 gives me b is equal to 1 
have. All right. Now, second case, if if x is equal to let's say negative three from here, if this is zero, that also means x is equal to negative three. So now let's plug in x is equal to negative three in this equation over here. Okay. If x is a negative three, this gives me three square is a nine plus one is ten. And if x is negative three, so this term is zero. Same thing here, x is a minus three, so minus three plus three is zero. Zero multiplied by b gives me zero. And here we got c into minus three minus one, which is minus four, and square of that gives me 16. Okay, so we got 10 is equal to c16. Divide both sides by 16 gives me c is equal to 10 over 16 or common factor 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 8 is 16. So c is 5 over 8. Okay, so we found a, we found c. Now let's find b, oh sorry, we found b and c. Now we need to find a. So we can equate, we can equate the factors of x square here, okay? So on the left hand side, what is the factor of x square? Oh, sorry, not the factor, what do you call them? Coefficient, the coefficient of x square is one on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, see, x times x square and will be multiplied by a. So this gives me a, and there is no coefficient of x square. There is no term of x square, but this will give me x square something into c. So, so a plus c into x square for sure we'll get that term when we foil this map, when we foil these factors or when we multiply them. Okay, and that is equal to one because the coefficient of x square on the left hand side is one. All right. And we know c is 5 over 8. So this means 1 is equal to a plus 5 over 8. Now subtract 5 over 8 from both hand side. This gives me a is equal to 1 minus 5 over 8. And that is equal to 3 over 8. So we found our a. I found our b and c. Now we're going to plug in those here and find the integration. Okay, so let's do that. So let's say this is equal to i. So i is equal to integration of a is 3 over 8. So 3 over 8 of x minus 1 dx plus b is 1 half. That gives me integration one half x minus one square plus c is equal to where is the c we found c is five over eight sorry t x integration five over eight x plus three dx okay so we can take our constants outside so three over eight integration of 1 over x minus 1 dx plus 1 half integration of 1 over x minus 1 square dx plus 5 over 8 integration of 1 over x plus 3 dx and the integration of 1 over x is log of x so in case x minus 1 so it will be 3 over 8 log modulus of x minus 1 and the integration of this is function is minus 1 over 2 into x minus 1 plus 5 over 8 log of x plus 3 plus constant so those those two are standard integration and this one i can show you over here so integration of 1 over x minus 1 square can be written as dx integration of x minus 1 
and if I take this to numerator it becomes minus 2 dx and you know the integration of x raised to power n is x raised to power n plus 1 so in our case it becomes x minus 1 raised to power minus 2 plus 1 over minus 2 plus 1 so that gives me x raised to power minus 1 raised to power minus 1 and this gives me negative over here which is equal to negative 1 over x minus 1 so i bring this in the denominator and that's what we got over here minus sign 1 over x minus 1 and 1 half was already there so this is the answer for this integral using partial fractions so i always recommend you guys to practice more examples so that way you'll be good to go and please please share the video with your friends and don't forget to